As you probably already know, Bob Hawke, Australia's 23rd Prime Minister, died yesterday aged 89. In this video, I'd just like to show you some classic footage of Bob Hawke doing what he does best. Enjoy the show. I tell you what, any boss who sacks anyone for not turning up the day is a bum. <laughs> The Prime Minister went out to bat feeling quite confident, having scored well the last time the two teams met. He hit the first ball for four runs, and went on to hit 28 runs before this delivery. There was considerable concern about Mr Hawke's right eye, which was cut when the ball smashed the lens of his glasses. He was taken to the casualty ward of Royal Canberra Hospital for x-rays and for glass to be cleaned out of his eye. Later in the afternoon, he returned to the match, but only as a spectator. How was it, Mr. Hawke? Oh, well, I haven't felt better, but it's, uh, it's okay. They told me I was very lucky that uh, it scratched the, uh, the surface of the eye a bit, but they told me I was very lucky it could have done some pretty horrible damage, they said, and the x-ray of the nose, and it doesn't seem to be any break. It's swollen, but it doesn't seem to be any break. Any animosity towards the journalist? Well, no, but I... Uh, that was Gary O'Neill of the Herald. I expect a good run from the Herald in the next few weeks. But will this in any way change your campaigning plan no, next week? No, no, it could have, but no, no, no. It's just a bit of bad luck. Uh, and uh, the opposition here led by Tony. Yeah, Tony, as I've said, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't mind Tony personally. He's not, he's not a bad bloke, but as I said during the campaign, he's as mad as a cut snake. Uh, <laughs> And he is on this issue. He is on this issue. I mean, totally irresponsible. So I'll just tell you a story, which is also a boating story, which captures the Australian irreverence. There's three blokes. <laughs> Some of you have heard the story, but it just captures the thought. Three blokes, a Frenchman, an Englishman, an Aussie. And uh, hiking in the Andes in the middle of summer, it's about 45 bloody degrees. <laughs> Sweating like pigs. They get to the top of this mountain, they look down, and there's this most beautiful, pristine lagoon. They go scrambling down the side of the mountain, get their gear off and dive in. Oh, bloody marvellous. The natives come and grab them, take them to the chief. The chief says, you have broken most sacred law. <laughs> this is our most sacred site. For this you die. When we kill you, we take off skin. Out of skin, make canoes. Put canoes on legs. Permanent reminder all people, never infringe our most sacred site. Tie them up! <laughs> they tie them up, he says, this, says this Frenchman. Before you die, you have one last wish. What's your last wish? He said, uh, I, I, would, um, I, I would like a knife. So they bring him knife, he says, I am not going to die at the hands of you savages. Vive la France! <laughs> and over he goes. Then he says to the Englishman, What your last wish? Mm, you like my friend from across the channel? I too would like a knife. And I bring him a knife and he says, mm, You like my friend from across the channel? I too am not going to die at the hands of you savages. God save the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> then say to the, the Aussie, What your last wish? He says, I want a fork. <laughs> <laughs> so they bring him a fork and he goes, <laughs> There goes your f canoe. <laughs> when the evening's inspiration through the work is blood shall run, there can be no power greater anywhere than in the sun. Get what force on earth if you can. 